Welcome back guys. In this video tutorial, we'll be talking about uh, the Klinau fragment. I haven't seen any video on YouTube about Klinau fragment till now. So that's why I decided to make this video. Now, uh, you probably uh, have heard this name a lot uh, and in experimental purposes. So what is actually Klinau fragment? In the basic answer I, I can give you is that Klinau fragment is a fragmentized portion of DNA polymerase 1. That's what I can tell. So it is a fragment fragment of DNA polymerase 1 from E. coli. This is from Escherichia coli. So that is uh, the simplest answer for this. Now actually what we know is that E. coli have multiple types of DNA polymerase. Like DNA polymerase 1, DNA polymerase 2, 3, 4, 5, many different types. Among them, in my previous video also, I have talked about uh, mainly about polymerase 1 and polymerase 3. Because remember DNA polymerase 3, DNA polymerase 3 also known as DNA pol 3 is the most important enzyme that carries the DNA polymerization during DNA replication process. Except for this DNA polymerase 3, there is also another one that is the DNA polymerase 1 that we are talking about in this case. DNA polymerase 1 also very important because it helps in the removal of this Okazaki fragment and also synthesizing new uh, DNA strand in that place. So that is also another important thing. But there is a remarkable difference between this DNA polymerase 3 and polymerase 1. According to the structural uh, features, DNA polymerase 3 is much more complex. It's far complex structure, but DNA polymerase 1 is less complex, looking like a hand, right? Now, if we look at here, actually, the, the function for DNA polymerase in all these cases are majorly two types. One is the polymerization function, and the one is the depolymerization or exonuclease function. So polymerization function means it can add nucleotide sequence one after another and elongate the DNA chain and exonuclease means it can cleave uh, the nucleotides and can short uh, the DNA chain. Now here normally what we know is that DNA polymerase 1, this one, DNA polymerase 1 have both of these properties. So if you look at those properties here, DNA pol 1. If we look at both of the properties, one is the polymerization and the polymerization property for DNA polymer is one, remember the direction is 5 prime to 3 prime, this is the polymerization direction. Now they also have this exonuclease functionality, the exonuclease function here is 1 from 5 prime to 3 prime, another from 3 prime to 5 prime. Now, usually what we know, let us say this is the DNA, growing DNA, 5 prime to 3 prime, obviously, it can help in the growth from 5 to 3 prime here in this direction. Now, definitely, if it adds a wrong nucleotide sequence, it can cleave that wrong nucleotide sequence out. And for the convenience of this thing to do, sh they should start cleaving from this terminal, from this 3 to 5 prime terminal, right? So that is very, very important guys. So they can synthesize from 5 prime to 3 prime, but in turn can cleave from 3 prime to 5 prime. So for that reason, the exonuclease activity is always present from 3 prime to 5 prime, both for DNA polymerase 3 and polymerase 1. But polymerase 1 have an extra exonuclease activity of 5 prime to 3 prime. That is very, very unique to this DNA polymerase 1. So if we look at the complex, complete structure of DNA polymerase 1, it contains all of these three activities. Okay. Now let us say we take that DNA polymerase 1 and we treat it with a protease. The protease that is called subtilisin, probably that is, uh, <laughs> let me check once, okay, yeah. So cleave it 
with subtilisin protease. The name of the protease is subtilisin. So, if we add this subtilisin protease, remember it's a protease means it can degrade protein, cleave protein. So, this subtilisin will cleave different part of this polymerase 1. Okay. So, once the subtilisin is present there and it will cleave the polymerase 1 exonuclease domain that is the 5 prime to 3 prime exonuclease domain. So, now after using the subtilisin it will cleave 5 prime to 3 prime exonuclease domain only but it will retain the 3 prime to 5 prime exonuclease as well as the 5 prime to 3 prime polymerization domain. Okay. So, once we treat it with subtilisin what we get we will get a DNA polymerase DNA polymerase 1 of course and that polymerase 1 now only retain the 3 prime to 5 prime exonuclease as well as 5 prime to 3 prime polymerization activity. So, it will lost this particular functionality here. So, now as we know that DNA polymerase 3 contains both of this function. So, now simply by treating it with this protease subtilisin, we can convert the functionality of DNA polymerase 1 to like the DNA polymerase 3. Now, if you carry out this protease subtilisin mechanism one further step, in that case it will also cleave the I mean uh, cleave this 5 prime to 3 prime polymerization activity. So, it will only retain the exonuclease activity after that. So, a further stage with this protease will now only have 3 prime to 5 prime exonuclease activity. So, simply it can turn that polymerase into an exonuclease only. So, that so, so now remember the using this protease for the first time whatever fragment we get after cleaving the first fragment this fragment with only 3 prime to 5 prime exonuclease activity and the 5 prime to 3 prime polymerization activity will be termed as the cleaner fragment. Because cleaner fragment lacks the property of 5 prime to 3 prime exonuclease activity that is the unique feature of polymerase 1. Right? So, we can use cleaner fragment in different experimental conditions in in vitro rep DNA replication processes to understand and study the different stages. Okay, so that's all about cleanout fragment. If you like the video, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and also share this with your social friends. Thank you.